Hey and welcome. If you haven't been here before, my name is Andrea. My hope is to bring hope and knowledge to those suffering with chronic and environmental illness that there is healing through lifestyle and dietary changes. But today I'm going to talk about carnivore versus animal-based diet and which one is better. Now I actually don't like the question which one is better. I think the right question we need to ask is which one is better for you. People have different bio-individual needs depending on their health and their genes and everything in between. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I hope that I can explain both of these ways of eating to you well enough so that you can determine on your own which one is best for you. Please like, share, and comment below. I love to hear from you guys about your health journeys as well as what you'd like to learn next. Now let's get started. I'm in a couple carnivore groups on Facebook and it really, 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 really bothers me that people are so idealistic and dogmatic about what other people choose and choose to not eat. Like I said in my other videos, it's really important to educate ourselves what benefits certain foods have for us and possibly what foods can harm us. But again, everybody's different. For example, when I have sweet potatoes, my joints hurt. And maybe one day I'll be able to eat sweet potatoes, but right now I can't. And that brings me to carnivore. Carnivore is the ultimate elimination diet. I believe Michaela Peterson kind of coined the term lion diet, which is just beef, salt, and water. I think this is the perfect place to start. Why? This is because you exclude all inflammatory and anti-nutrients from your diet. But what about fiber? Well, there's been a couple studies done saying that fiber actually doesn't help us use the restroom. It just gives bulk to our stool and can actually make you more constipated, especially if you have overgrowth of fungal or bacterial infections in your gut. So if you cut all that out and you just stick with meat, you'll get a solid foundation of what works best for you. So there are different variations of carnivore. Some people do dairy. Some people, of course, incorporate fish and organs. And then other things like seasonings, coffees, and sweeteners. But the bottom line with carnivore is no plant foods. No fruit, no vegetables, nada. For me personally, I go back and forth between animal-based and carnivore. I'm actually trying to transition back to stricter carnivore to see what's going on. I had added some low toxic vegetables and they actually ended up giving me some digestive issues. So for now I'm actually just sticking to meat, a little bit of eggs, and I'm actually doing no dairy. And I just tried the Equipped Prime Protein, which I believe will help me sustain this diet. As far as vitamins and minerals go, a lot of people ask me, well, what about all your vitamins and minerals? Well, I have some great news for you. Most, if not all, your vitamins and minerals can be found in animal products. This is why I encourage carnivores to eat the rainbow of animal foods, if you can tolerate them. I know some people can't tolerate eggs or dairy, but if you can, I encourage you to incorporate those into your way of eating. I believe all ruminant meats are on the table. You can tolerate poultry, that's awesome, fish, dairy, eggs, and organs. Now, if you can't tolerate or don't like them, then don't eat them. If you start to feel not well just eating steak, you need to realize that steak is lower in some nutrients that other animal products can make up for. Here's a diagram of all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrition in a ribeye. Before I talk about animal base, I wanted to share about the scary anti-nutrients. I'm just kidding, they're not that scary. If you're healthy, you can probably tolerate them. So what are anti-nutrients? Well, anti-nutrients are nutrients found in plants that inhibit our ability to digest them. 
Humans' digestive tracts are made a little bit differently from other animals. We all know that most ruminant animals, like cows, have multiple chambers in their digestive system that allows them to break down these plants. There are two main anti-nutrients that I want to talk about. One is lectins and the other one are oxalates. Lectins are found in foods like beans, potatoes, and grains. Before modern cooking, there were ways that our ancestors would ferment these foods to release most of the lectins in them so that it's easier to digest. Now, oxalates, on the other hand, are mostly found in leafy greens, soy, and almonds. I wanted to mention about almonds because they are heavily pushed on a ketogenic diet, but you need to be careful about eating too many almonds because they have a high amount of oxalates in them. As I mentioned in my video about why I started Carnivore, which I will link in the description below, I read the book Toxic Superfoods by Sally K. Norton. She goes into detail about her journey through oxalate toxicity. She also mentions what the safe amount of oxalates to be consumed daily is. Now, oxalates are known, even in the medical community, cause things like kidney stones, but they can also cause gum problems and achy joints. So now you're probably wondering, okay, well, if I wanted to eat animal-based, what can I eat? Well, there are what we call low toxic plant foods. Some low toxic plant foods include zucchini, squash, honey, berries, and even things like cucumbers and avocado. Now when consuming an animal-based diet, I think it's important to understand that not everything works for everyone. There is no one-size-fits-all diet out there, and I even hate using the word diet because it has such a bad rap behind it nowadays. I think that this should be a way of eating, a way of life that doesn't suck the joy out of your life and that doesn't make you stress. Stress is such a huge health component, and if you get joy from eating garlic and don't have any reactions to it, I say go for it. There's one thing with Animal Base I think it's important to remember and that's is to watch your blood sugar. I know some people who can eat some fruit and be fine and some other people who can't. Also, I believe that a high carbohydrate diet is not optimal unless you're doing some heavy training or long distance running. It is also possible to stay in ketosis while consuming carbohydrates. I do consume a little bit of carbohydrates because I do have some electrolyte balances that I'm trying to navigate through. The carbohydrates I consume is actually from coconut water though. So whether you choose animal-based or carnivore, you need to do what's best for you and not stress over, oh, I can't have this and I have to eat this. That's not what this is about. I found so much simplicity in carnivore and I hope that you do too. Overall, I think these two ways of eating is the basic foundation of a healthy lifestyle. Whether you're animal-based or carnivore, I think that figuring out what works for you is the best way to go. And you have to remember this won't happen overnight. This is gonna take time to experiment and figure out what works best for you. I'm currently in NTP school, so hopefully I'll be able to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people who are interested in transforming their lives. But for right now, I would suggest that you find a coach or somebody that you trust to help you navigate these ways of eating. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. I also would love to hear from you guys about your health journeys, what you'd like to learn or hear me talk about next. Until next time, make sure to eat your steak.